presentation for the day. Esther's evaluator is John Barnes. John, could you give us Esther's objectives for her presentation? Number two in the storytelling manual. Right, and this is uh, Let's Get Personal, and the objectives are to learn the elements of a good story and to create and tell an original story based on a personal experience. Wonderful, excellent. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Esther's speech today, she could work for Nike. Her presentation title is Just Do It. Now, these are personal lessons learned from parenting. So I have a feeling most of us in the room will find that this is something we've all experienced. Renee is off the hook for now, but otherwise I think, no, and not Kathy. She, but the rest of us will really relate, and even for those of us who don't have children of our own, we have nieces, we have nephews, we were kids, we were children with parents. Help me welcome Esther. Perhaps you've heard it said that the miracle is not that adults produce children, but children produce adults. <laughs> and if you're a parent, you've probably had something of this experience. You brought that first child into the world and suddenly you were totally responsible for a tiny, helpless, fragile being. You stepped up to it. You matured. Then it increased. By the time you were a toddler, you had to be a role model. And it just kept going, year by year. You matured and they matured. As they approached adulthood, about junior high year, they may have started explaining life to you as they understood. And you learned some amazing things from them in a different way. I've only gone through this once. I have one daughter, Rachel, who's grown now. As she was growing up, I began to see she had more promise of athletic skills than I ever had. It's been inspiring. I've stayed fit, but I never could have achieved the things she has. She wanted to be a gymnast. This was going to be a challenge for me. By now, I was in graduate school. Time and money were close, but I made a way for her to take gymnastics classes. While she was learning gymnastics, I was studying and reading. It was a great fit for her. She's a small, slim gal, she's well-muscled, and she has strong shoulders. Also, competition interested her. Later, she used her athletic abilities to become a cheerleader. One of her thoughts about that was, well, there's no competition except getting in. She missed that competition she had had in gymnastics. Also, it was a good fit for her because she's a perfectionist, an attribute I would say she gets from her father. If you've watched gymnastics or figure skating in the Olympics, you may have realized how much perfection is demanded in these sports. You can't make a misstep. If you make a mistake and correct it, it still counts against you. You're not allowed to fall down. Women typically wear their hair short or uptight because you can't brush your hair out of your face while you're performing. If you have a wardrobe malfunction, well, keep going. You can't fix it. When you make those flying leaps and land, you have to land with your feet the way they should be. In gymnastics, they need to be parallel. If you wiggle your heels to correct that, that's against you just the same. Haven't quite got your balance, have to take a step, that counts. Can you think of any other sport that would have those demands? It would be crazy. But that's the way it is with gymnastics and with figure skating. For her being a perfectionist, it didn't discourage her, but she could always see ahead of her that possibility that she could achieve perfection in her next performance. In gymnastics, she became a stronger person. Her muscles built up. Her hands first developed calluses, blisters, and then calluses. I bought her leather protectors to wear on her palms. Just the same, sometimes the skin would tear underneath of those and she would have to wear tape on them. It sounds really painful. Once on the uneven bars during practice, she fell on the mat. The uneven bars are set to accommodate the gymnast's height. Maybe she grew a quarter of an inch that week, I don't know, but somehow her toe touched the other bar, she fell on her face, and her lip was torn loose from the gum on the inside. Yeah, it sounds painful. Off to the emergency room for stitches, back on the bars. She was soon targeted to compete, and she liked that. She and her coach worked out a routine. This took weeks of time, something that was doable yet challenging. And then there were weeks and weeks of work making it look smooth. 
If you've seen gymnastics performances, you realize how effortless it looks, but that's not achieved in a short time. It takes a lot of work. So we would go off to the meets on Saturdays. Her best event was the uneven bars, and this goes to the Olympic level. There are two bars, kind of like chinning bars. The lowest one is a little out of reach, so you have to leap to get to it. They're offset both vertically and horizontally. The gymnast leaps up to the bar, takes some swings to get momentum, and then does an amazing variety of flips. Over on their stomach, back on their back, swinging by their knees, by their arms. It's amazing to watch. And then finally, to conclude it all, they do a couple more swings for momentum, do some kind of a flip and land on their feet, and they better be square. She went to these meets, and it was a source of pride to me to see her perform. And it's amazing to see your child do these things that you can't do. She would stride out on the mat. She had this warm-up swing with her arms. To me, that just spelled, I'm going to nail this. And she generally did. She would leap up to the bar, back and forth to get that momentum, around and around. The routines only last a few minutes. But if it's your beloved child out there, it's forever because you know they can get hurt. And then finally, that dismount. Oh, I hope she nails it. And she would usually nail it, salute the judge as you're required to do, and wait to see what the results would be. The particular performance I remember so well was a meet like that. It was a big meet, I think, in Longmont. We rode down with her coach. The coach would stand at the end of the bars during the performance to spot, but they wouldn't touch them because if they touch you, well, that's supporting you and that's a point against you. Finally, it was my daughter's turn. She strode out on the mat, saluted the judge, gave that confident arm swing, and up on the bars, and away she went. Back and forth, around and round. I should have had it memorized, but really, I, I didn't. And finally, it was time for that dismount. I noticed her coach step forward to spot her, and it didn't seem to be as strong as usual, but I'm not a gymnast. I didn't really see anything unusual. She nailed it. She saluted the judge, she got the ribbon. We were on the way home and her judge said to her, Rachel, I didn't think you had the momentum to make that dismount. My daughter said, no, I didn't either. She said, I felt there was an audible gasp in the room from the judges and from the other coaches. They thought you were gonna fall. I stepped forward to spot you, but you got, you got it somehow. My daughter agreed and they went on to talk like this. I was mystified, and I wanted to ask my daughter, but I waited till we got home, and I said, well, Rachel, how did that work? You said you didn't have the momentum. She said, no, I didn't. I really needed another swing, but you didn't take it. No, that would have cost me points if I had taken another swing. Well, then how did you do it? She said, well, I just did it anyway. <laughs> and that, to me, is one of the greatest lessons I've learned from my daughter. How many times do we take on endeavors where we don't have the momentum. We don't have the resources we need. It's gonna cost us to go back and get those resources. But if we go ahead, there's a real risk of failure. We may fall on our face or on our head. What do we do? Her solution was to push through and just do it anyway. Thank you, Thank you Esther. Everyone, please.